The euro sell-off continues as Greece's debt issues worse. And take a look at euro dollar. We are off the lows that we saw this morning, uh, briefly touching below that 132 level. So we're seeing a little bit of buying off that base. Now this comes after the EU statistics office revealed that Greece's budget gap last year now stands at 13.6 percent of GDP, which is worse than previously thought. Let's bring in Robert Rennie here, currency strategist at the Westpac Bank here in Australia, staying with us, Jim Rogers, chairman at Rogers Holdings, and of course Kirby Daly too at the New Edge Group. Uh, Rob, you say Europe fiddles while Athens burns. It's a nice analogy to describing those scorching flames at 600 basis points over Bunds is certainly um, causing a lot of heat. Yeah, you really do get the sense that we're now playing out the end game. Um, 19th of May, Greece needs to come up with 8.5 billion euro to redeem debt. It doesn't have 8.5 billion euro sitting around doing nothing. It's got to do something. Europe, meanwhile, the EU, the IMF talks carry on. We're told that's going to be two weeks where well, the clock is ticking. Yeah. We need action. Ratings agencies are moving in as well. This is sitting now four notches above speculative or junk status. Why isn't it junk already? It, well, Jim's telling us this morning the country is virtually bankrupt. Well, I mean, essentially we're getting to that point. Indeed, we're two, three, four weeks away from us getting to that point. The important thing for me is that we're beginning to see the contagion kicking in as well. Look at Portuguese debt over the last couple of days. Over the last week, two-year yields in Portugal are up by over 100 basis points. So there is clear contagion and Europe, we need something. We need something Let's fast. Let's get Jim in on this, Jim. Rob, so where do we put our money? Are we put it in Australian dollars? Are we put it in yen? Where do we go? Look, I, I, I think there's a number of answers to that question. Clearly, you look at, you know, to me, the, there's a number of tectonic plates out there. Europe is heading in one direction. Asia is heading in the opposite direction. You look at the updates that we've had over the last couple of weeks from MASS, from the Reserve Bank of India, from the Bank of Korea, even the IMF. They upgraded their forecasts by over 1% um, for uh, emerging Asian um, GDP for the next year or so. So we've got a very good, clear bill of health um, coming through here. You know, that, that, that's an important divergence for me. Look, the, the trades that I still like, and I think they've been proven this last week, I do like dollar yen higher. Um, next week we have the Fed. I think we're getting very close to the point where the Fed really has to consider very, very carefully whether they want to use the word exceptionally going forward. Clearly rates will have to stay low for a long time to come, but I think there is an argument that we will see the dollar strengthen, and the one axis that I really like it strengthening against is against the yen. I can see significant upside still for dollar yen, and I think dips back down to 92 are a very good buying opportunity. Rob, I, I have some friends who swear to me that that the Australian dollar is the best place to be right now. Do you have a view? Look, I do. Um, I like, on a medium-term basis, I do like the Australian dollar higher. You look at the update that we got from the RBA in the form of the minutes. They, they, they painted a picture of significant upside on the terms of trade. They're looking through some of the weakness that we're seeing in the domestic home loan data. They're looking through some of the weakness that we're seeing in retail sales over the last couple of months. They've got a very, very upbeat view, and a lot of that comes from this tremendously upbeat uh, update that we've had from Asia over the last couple of weeks. I I do like the Australian dollar, but it's very hard to like the Australian dollar when the euro is collapsing through 133, and I think that that is a short-term risk. Any weakness, though, back to 1991, that sort of area uh, in the Aussie, I think, is a great buying opportunity. Hey, Rob, it's Kirby here. A quick question on the RMB. We've heard from everyone in the world except those who are going to pull the trigger uh, that we're going to see a revaluation. So obviously there's been plenty of time to get on, uh, in on that trade on the other Asian currencies that are supposedly going to, uh, to strengthen in, uh, in concert with that. Is that trade already finished? Are there some uh, Asian currencies that you th still think are going to strengthen if and when that RMB revaluation comes? Look, I, I, you're right. It, it, it's a very well-discussed trade. Importantly, though, this week, the, uh, the weakness that we've seen in dollar China has come from the onshore market, and I think that that is important. Traditionally, we see the offshore market taking um, the ND, NDF curve lower, and the domestic guys arbitraging it back onto the, uh, the onshore market. This week, it's been the other way around, and I think that probably tells you that we're getting closer to that point. You also have the Commerce Department in the U.S. dropping this um, aluminium investigation as well. I think that tells you we're getting closer 
closer. G20 this weekend, China's going to face a lot of pressure. Look, I still like holding um, in a six-month to 12-month short dollar China. I think it's a good way not only of playing a revaluation, it's also a very low-vol way of, of, of staying short uh, dollar against Asia, and I still think there is merit to, uh, to hold that trade. Yeah, Rob, you know, this may be sort of uh, uh, out in left field, but I was just looking at some charts uh, a couple of days ago. And in terms of Asian currency appreciation in anticipation of renminbi appreciation, MYR, the ringgit, uh, has actually done probably uh, better than all of them put together, up about 7 8% or so. Does that have legs or is that done? Yes. And the fact that it's not tradable offshore, what sort of difference does that make? Look, I, we've been certainly watching uh, dollar Mal Malaysia, and if you look at it on a six-month basis, you, you're right. It is up significantly so far this year. To me, I think there's an important message for China. You look at the other economies in Asia that are effectively managing their currency on a basket basis, Singapore and, uh, and Malaysia. They have let their currencies appreciate significantly. I think there is a strong message that the rest of Asia is giving China, and it is that currency strength makes an awful lot of sense, not just from a domestic point of view, but from an international point of view. Look, we are thinking that the Malaysian move um, is becoming mature. I do like selling strength in uh, dollar India. I do like selling strength in dollar won. But it's more from a short-term point of view. I think you, what you're really looking for is short-term opportunities, just as we got over the weekend when we had the Goldman bombshell. Monday morning, you get a good opportunity to sell into strength in, uh, in dollar Asia. You pick India, you pick won. Those are the good trades to be looking at. Hey, Rob, uh, Bernie in Hong Kong, just a quick last one from me. Uh, let me. Let me pull something out of even further in left field. You know, the, uh, the, the frequency uh, with which we're hearing, you know, people come out of the woodwork and talk and opine about the renminbi is increasing. I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming, you know, bi-hourly rather than, uh, you know, bi-weekly now. Um, I asked this question in Hong Kong. What about the Hong Kong peg? Because they say that as the renminbi get, gains further and further strength, it makes the uh, dollar US, Hong Kong dollar peg more and more irrelevant. You ask the officials here, and they feign ignorance about it. But it's a, it's a question that people are increasingly asking beneath the surface here. Is it worth, is it worth 30 seconds? Look, I think it is worth 30 seconds. Look, the, the, the thing for the Hong Kong peg really is it has paid Hong Kong not to question the situation and not to allow anybody to question the longevity of the Hong Kong peg. It's a policy that's worked very, very well. It's withstood the test of time. It's withstood many, many different crises, and it's still pulled through. I think it faces the biggest test, and if we do see more flexibility coming through in dollar China and we do get momentum, there is no doubt that we're going to see much, much more significant questions being so I do think dollar Hong Kong is a way to play. I still like dollar China. I still think there is good merit. It's very low vol, and it is moving in the right direction. But I think dollar Hong Kong is another way to play that theme. Thank you for answering all of our questions this morning. Much appreciated.